the Planet Wisdom Show with your host, Liz the Savoy. Yay! Hello, everybody! How are you doing tonight? Yeah! Um, I saw or heard some people won some pretty awesome prizes! That's right. Here at the Planet Wisdom Show, we bribe you properly. Thank you. You know, before we continue, I want to give a huge shout out to the curator and mastermind of Super Wonder Gallery and Super Wonder Studios. Everyone, please give it up for Christian Aldo. He is the heart. He's the hardest working man I ever met. Seriously. All right, guys. Are you ready for our next guest? Yeah. I am so pumped up for this guest. I have been running away from him all night because I don't want to blow my load having to chat with him before I chat with you. He is one of my favorite artists. I am so excited to get into his head, and I want you to give a very big warm welcome to Brent the Serialist! Very good to see you, Congratulations. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yourself? I'm very good. I am so happy to have you in the hot seat with me. Finally. I have been trying so long to get you on my podcast. Dude. I don't know if you knew that, but I've been kind of stalking you. Well, yeah, I yep. see you on my feeds. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wanted to tell every, I wanted to tell everybody the first time I ever saw your art was at Gorilla Monsoon on oh, Queen wow. oh, West. Oh, wow. Do you guys remember that? Wow. Yeah, I used to bartend there. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. I didn't know that, but I really, the really loved your work. Yeah, it is a hand you now. <laughs> for, for those of you who are not wrestling fans, Gorilla Monsoon used to uh, do a lot of really awesome commentary with Bobby Heenan. Yeah. And um, once I knew that, I actually had a little more love for that restaurant. I believe the owner loved wrestling, too. Um, I don't think he really knew anything about no? wrestling, to be perfectly honest. I don't know how he got the name. I know it does come from WWE. But he was okay. a Sri Lankan gentleman who was just definitely more about business. And well, there goes the romance of that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was a great name. <laughs> it was a great, a great name. Um, you know, and again, I always love an origin story. Okay. Please tell me, what? how did you come to the name Brent the Serialist? Um, I think it was just through creating the serialist method. So, okay. um, What is the serialist method for those who don't know? Um, again, it's basically just a collage, long and short, more on an OCD kind of uh, manic level. Um, but again, an art, you kind of have to be in an ism. So I okay. just kind of coined the term serialism. Okay. You know what? You just taught me something new. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> and when I was looking um, you know, through your social media and yep. advertising you, I kept writing surrealist. I'm like, no, 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 that's not what you said. And I went back to my notes. I'm like, serialist. Okay, well, he doesn't mean serial killer. Yeah, it's not um, serial killer. No, or, yeah. or serial food. Yeah, or serial food. But, you know, I was like, okay, well, there is a okay, reason mother. behind this. Yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, kind of a bit of a moniker, just trying to uh, differentiate oneself in the arts world. That's very cool. And your work is incredible. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but in the wonderful collage images that you make, you actually use the images of the person you're making the image of. Uh, depending on the subject matter. So yeah. yeah, most recently during COVID, I kind of put myself back through art school just at home uh, where I'd been experimenting with the serialist medium for a long time and felt comfortable enough through those explorations to kind of dig into other artists' worlds. So I could use the serialist method to paint in Van Gogh's kind of style. Oh, so I would okay. do a Van Gogh portrait, but it was made out of thousands of images of Van Gogh and his paintings. So they become kind of biographical collages almost. Uh, we are what we create in a sense. That's incredible. You know, I mean, without giving away your process too much, how do you keep that organized? Because I look at your work, it's so intricate. Yeah. I usually do two at a time as well. So I usually use the analogy of kind of playing chess with 100 people because you really do have to think a lot of moves ahead. You're chasing wet spots. You're controlling with two other paintings. Sometimes you're like, no, that's a blue from this painting. This is the blue from that. And I have trays with paper and images all over the place, it gets a little chaotic, but oh, wow. I think that's kind of representational of the way my mind works too. Okay. Where I generally don't do simple anything. So yeah. uh, leave it to me to find the complex way to make complex art. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I always ask every artist this, is there any work that you've created that you really didn't want to part with? Uh, there's one I've been kind of thinking of that I wish I could see with adult eyes, where it was kind of that one eureka moment of, I hear a lot of comics talk about it when they first hear like that people can be comics for a living when yeah. like, that's a job like being funny like and that was kind of the way I reacted when people reacted to my painting or doing that drawing story where they were like you should do art as a career 
And I just didn't know that was an option. I was like, yeah, well, why bad. would anybody want to do anything <laughs> else if they could just do that? So that kind of set me on my path. And it was a large Tutankhamen, uh, full color, color, pencil crown drawing that I'd done in grade six. I went into the Peel office, which was the first thing oh, I'd done. And other wow. than like my mom's fridge, which is, I think, everyone's <laughs> first art gallery growing up. Absolutely. Um, but that was kind of, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it. I enjoyed the weeks I spent on the hallway all by myself, just laying on the floor doing it. But it was oh just gosh. the... The accolades as well, it was kind of a, the whole experience was really, yeah, kind of an epiphany. Well, and I ask every artist this, you know, how do you know when you're done working on that piece? Well, with these ones, they're literally almost puzzles. So sometimes you really don't even know until you put that last piece in. Um, but it really can, again, the Van Gogh took literally four months to the day. To, wow. Just to cut and paste together, not including the research that you do before to find out the biographical information. So, which is why I try to do two at a time, anything to speed process up. Uh, I'll listen to documentaries sometimes to research the next subject so I can kind of get two birds stoned as once, as Ricky says, mm -hmm. um, okay. and just kind of, yeah, just try to speed the process up as fast as I can. That's incredible. I didn't know that you did research on each, uh, each artist. Oh, yeah. Here. So I'm doing an Honest Ed painting right now. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Research, research. yeah. So he's kind of a Canadian Barnum & Bailey kind of yeah. character, this like carnival yeah. barker. Like he was always like the turkey guy to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but just <laughs> researching. Like, yeah, the Christmas turkey guy. It's just amazing what this like kid who dropped out of school at 14 and started a, a small shop and it became a big shop and then it became a big company and a theater production and a conglomerate and you just find out I love I, again I just love deep diving into any subject matter like whether it be when I was a kid I was obsessed with manatees and Titanic and I would just latch onto something and go deep into it and I think that's kind of how I ended up working later on which is kind of interesting. Well and that really explains the depth of your work because you know I was going to to bring that up but you can really see that there's a lot of love in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I l absolutely well, enjoy. I did paint Trump though too. <laughs> <laughs> but again, so they're not all biographical. Yep. Again, so Trump, <coughs> Trump is a fun one because when people see the original image where it's kind of him mocked up as Che Guevara with dollar signs rather yep. than stars, so it's kind of a Trump Guevara. Um, but people see him and they kind of get that lemon face and then when you walk up close you realize it's all made out of pictures of Pinocchio. <laughs> so you know, uh, again, it's juxtaposing all the secondary images with the primary image that gives you that visual narrative. So it could be biographical, it can be a pun, I mean it's literally limitless. You can it's apply it to anything. So clever. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say I really have been enjoying your Instagram lives where we're mm -hmm. watching you create. Again, that's been... Probably, especially when people see them in person, there's so many questions about the process because yeah. when they realize it's not computer generated, yeah. they just don't know how, wait, where do you even start? So again, you would never want to watch it in real time, like I guess said, four months for Van Gogh alone. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been doing these time-lapse videos where you can literally see a five hour session in 40 seconds. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So it's a little spastic, but you can literally see the kind of flower grow and just everything kind of slowly pieced together. And it really is kind of uh, organic in the sense that they're all similar medium, but they're all assembled very, very differently. That's amazing. Um, I always ask this of every artist who has a little furry pet, oh, yeah. best friend. <laughs> uh, I'm trying it's to remember your, your sweet little dog's name. Please remind me again. Columbo. Columbo is so Aww. cute. I'm like I'm biting my fist. The cute aggression is huge with this little one. He's, He's about, adorable. He and the way you love him, I love it. Yeah, he's my little guy. Is <laughs> now is he is he the one to want to be involved in what you're doing and getting his paws all over? Everything? Well, his he... dog bed is right at the bottom of my easel, so he <laughs> pretty much just sits there and pick the paper out of his bed every once in a while because I kind of get like Edward scissor hands once I get going. It's oh there's gosh. paper everywhere. That is and so yeah, precious. Yeah, he gets paper just all stuck up in his hair. And, <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's been trained not to eat it and that kind okay. of thing. But yeah, uh, that's true. Actually, we both adjusted to each other. Because <laughs> he is flipping adorable. Yeah, oh my gosh. Genius. Would you ever do a, a, a surrealist piece of him? Uh, I would like to actually. I'm planning on doing a portrait for my brother and sister in law because they just had their third baby. And again, I'm waiting for um, him to get a little bit older, but yeah, kind of applying all the family photos into doing a family rendition of their portrait as well. Nice. But uh, I'd like to see, I mean, you can incorporate the sonogram to the, the family photos for their pets. Yeah, yeah that's true. I mean, true. you can do it, it's endless. I did a Pal Peralta logo, which is like a skateboard uh, company from the 80s, and those two paintings are actually in Tony Hawk's office right now. Which yeah, I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. That's so cool. So that was just uh, Instagram, COVID. Just take a shot. Just, yeah, worst thing to say is no. 
and they're in his office. So, so you reached out to Tony Hawk and what? Yeah. His business partner. His business partner. Yeah. And then he got the paintings, and two weeks later, he snapped his finger, which had nothing to do with oh, me. Actually. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Just bad timing. Just bad timing. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a really cool accolade to have. Yeah, that was a, a career high for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, more to come. Mm -hmm. I, I can see that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a, I guess, again, a bucket list of... of uh, well, next week, actually, the uh, the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam is going to be showcasing Vincent. So on May the 4th, I got a little bit of a force with me. So I'm hoping that we can get uh, him sold. And uh, yeah, hopefully get a little bit of a blowback on that as well. So see what happens. Nice. guys i am all about manifest destiny name it to claim it yeah it's um you know that's again, all I, I want that for you it's a struggle i'm not gonna lie like being yeah. a full-time artist is difficult covid was a huge learning experience uh, <laughs> modified my business plan on an online presence that i wouldn't have normally done yeah um, but a lot of people were renovating their homes because everyone spent time at home you just had to do algorithms and hashtags yeah. and play that whole instagram game and mm, put on your knee pads and get out there and work mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> Why do you think I can't take the stairs tonight? <laughs> she was in LA for a while. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, smog. Oh, my gosh. Um, now, that being said, you know, I, I think it's a really interesting point that you're bringing up. You know, when I grew up in the 70s and the 80s, there was no such thing as social media. You yeah. went out, you hobnobbed, oh, I was a and you. Kid, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you, we were all Commodore kids, and you networked in person. And now, all of a sudden, we have the pandemic, we have social media, oh, yeah. and we're expected to have another career as a social media it's a full -time guru. Job. Yeah. yeah. It, you know. it became, during COVID, very much a full time job. But again, with social media, you can talk to people in Dubai. Yeah, that's true. You can talk to people in Amsterdam. Like, it's so interconnected. Now, for, for any young burgeoning artists, you know, we have a few in the audience tonight who are getting into the art game, as it were. Do you have any advice or tried and true tips and tricks on how to manage your social media presence for your art? Um, I would say just keep at it. Like, yeah. it's literally just consistency. I literally set alarms for myself, like, every day to... You know, I do one story, you know, a couple reels, yeah. like one post at the same time. Okay. Just kind of see where your peaks are and your values and your viewership. I mean, the attention span now is yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. It's oh, yeah. a 15 second video and you'll be lucky if someone sees four seconds of it. It's, yeah. I mean, they're so, um, that's why again, the time lapse are really great because you can yeah. get them so fast and it, you really have to capture people quick. That's so you true. You really have to capture people quick. But if you can get their attention, I think, Again, I think my paintings too really suck people in where you can really, yeah, you never get bored of looking at those things. Now, I am curious because I know very often when um, someone is showing their work online, it's watermarked. Mm -hmm. With the, the social media time lapse mm -hmm. and things that you're doing, mm -hmm. are there ways to protect anyone from borrowing that imagery? Uh, I'm not really that worried. I've actually had yeah. an artist from, I think she was in Spain, and she's kind of a collage artist and wants to kind of mimic my process. So we've been kind of coordinating back and forth where she's kind of inquiring how I do my process to try her own kind of explorations. And uh, I'm kind of ex kind of really interested to see how her experiments go, just to mm -hmm. see, yeah, someone kind of take it to that level. I think it'd be really interesting. It is an interesting concept to, to think about because, yeah, <laughs> In the state age, it's very easy to rip everything. Oh yeah, the know? NFTs were a big thing during COVID. Now you got AI, yeah. so I literally have to put like human-made art on my artwork sometimes. Wow. Yeah, no, when it's you true. See, when you see them in person too, they really do kind of look computer generated. Yeah. So again, when people see them in person, it's more impactful obviously, because they're four by five feet. I have a 13 foot Guernica in my house that I made. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I wanted yeah. to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, being you know really into art history growing up, I saw that and I was just, I, yeah, I jumped it down. I, I feel feet by seven feet. Jeez. Yeah, if it was half an inch bigger, I wouldn't get out of my building. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, how do you get in and out of your house? <laughs> With six people. Wow. <laughs> and a lot of swearing, I imagine. Uh, a little bit. A little bit of bribery? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Some beers. Yeah, yeah, a lot of years after. Yeah, but that was just kind of an experiment where I had done, again, because there's so much imagery, like I could never do like a postcard size print of Van Gogh. You would never see any of the secondary imagery. So they generally have to be a rather large size and four by five is a good standard where mm -hmm. it's big enough to do detail and renderings and you can get enough that you can catch the images, even in small <sighs> slippets. But, um, sorry, there's I know, it's very dry here. <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we are taking time to drink water out of a nice cup. <laughs> 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 get yours. Today. Oh, yeah. I love this mug. <laughs> You're going to see her. Sorry, um, you're I, And, you know, water bottles, important. Mm -hmm. Always hydrate. 
Now, um, if you could have your, uh, say for example, you had unlimited time, unlimited space, mm. unlimited everything. That would be ideal. What is your <laughs> dream project where like years or like Sistine Chapel? Not necessarily like the painting, but I've always had dreams of myself working on scaffolding. Like just like big, big. Because before I got interrupted by my thirsty water there. Um, so I was doing a very small portrait that it was the smallest I'd ever done. And I wanted to see how big I could go. And that's when I did the Guernica. But that was literally as big as I could possibly go in the space that I'm in. But right. the dream would always be to do something on scaffolding. But again, you want to be, the paintings have to be somewhat approachable so you can see all the. Uh, the world's beneath the paint, really. Um, would you I ever would love to work really big? Yeah, um, like maybe it maybe a huge mural inside a building. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've done another you know? mural since Guernica, but I've learned my lesson where I made it segmented, so it's in three separate campuses, mm -hmm. so it's a little mm -hmm. easier to move. <laughs> Smart, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. It's quite easier to ship. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Mm -hmm. Note to self. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you know what? What sort of things? Because again, I'm very process oriented. When you are working, yeah. what sort of music do you listen to? Do you have a routine or a ritual? Uh, usually it's a lot of classical. Yeah. Uh, I kind of put on a lot of classical mixes. Um, sometimes nothing at all. Uh, sometimes I'm just thinking. Okay. Because um, there's, yeah, just kind of a lot to keep track of, uh, the more complex the paintings, especially. Um, so even the other day, I was doing The Honest Ed, and I started working, but I'm also working on Elvis, and I started painting the Honest Ed images in the Elvis colors. So I kind of got a little mixed up. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God, I'm using wrong ones. I got switched up where, again, you really have to keep track of everything that's going on. And it's it gets so, I have these Jenga trays, of, I call them my palettes, but they're literally wow. just cut up images in all the color codes and then have to be assembled, so. Do you, do you make like a, a thumbnail plan ever? So the drawings I do on the canvas are very, detailed because yeah. once I get going, it gets covered rather quickly. Um, so it's, again, there's a lot of similarities in the process where you kind of go background first, kind of outside in, inside out. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, the drawings have to be very precise, very precise. That's really good to know, especially if you're working large, um, just very quickly, do you ever use a projection? Uh, I have in the past, but yeah. I generally just use like a grid structure, which is kind of actually what my first art teacher kind of taught me, which is kind of funny how you, I think you get kind of stuck in. I know David Lynch, I was listening to one of his art documentaries and he talked about how all of his other family members had coloring books, but his mom never let him use a coloring book. He always had to draw his own stuff. And it was just kind of, he's like, I don't know why she did it for me, but it really did inform his art where he's more of an illustrative kind of artist in that way. Um, but yeah, those early lessons can be very pivotal, I think, for an artist. No, that's a very good point. Foundation is so important. Oh, huge, huge. Now, where can people see your work? Um, so I've actually left some cards up front for uh, okay. Instagram and everything, and uh, there's QR codes on there, so you can just scan the business card, it'll take you right to the Instagram, which is, again, is kind of handy, where uh, you really have to make it simple these days, so. That's wonderful. Brent, yeah. I want to thank you so much for being with well, us here you. today. It I'll goes by so fast, it you does. know. Please keep me posted. I want to come to all your art events. You have to come by and see Columbo. I want to do lots of this, and yeah, I want to see Columbo. Yeah. But be careful, <laughs> I might take him home. Oh, I've had many friends before. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> thank you so much, Brent. Thank we'll you, see about the threats. <laughs> guys, I want to thank, thank you, you so much for joining us again tonight. Uh, please go to YouTube and subscribe so that you can see every single episode of the Planet Listum show. And again, if you would like to be our patron, you can go to Patreon. And if you would like to do a one-time tip to help continue with making this show, you can always go to PayPal me as well. And remember, tune in, turn on, and take part because you truly never know just who is going to land right here on Planet Listum. Be well, everybody. <laughs>